<laughs> right. The uh, second question: Is it time? Is it? Is it true that if you mistreat your husband, Hur al Ain will curse you? Yes, sister. I'm, sh I'm sure that you know about this hadith that the woman who does <coughs> annoy her husband unjustly and she does not give him what he wants, then those Hur al Ain not just will curse you. The angels will curse you. The angel will curse you until the morning. And not only that, but the Holy will say like the following. He is with you temporarily. He's about to depart to us. The Holy will say, he is with you temporarily. Till he died. He's about to depart to us. So feel a lot in him. And it is normally the case that the woman, she is the one, she will do what we call it the sexual harassment. If you've heard about this. It is she is the one. And that is why when we come, for example, to the, 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 the social problem between husband and wife, it's down to that issue. And you know, the Prophet also said that through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said that if you are a dispute with your wife, then mawriba, first thing is what? Admonishing. Then if the admonishing doesn't work, then it's what? Hajjur fil firash. That is, you abandon her in intercourse while you are in the same bedroom. You don't sleep in another bedroom or another haram to show the kids. But that is more suffering for the man, actually, not for the female. So normally the man would skip number two, because he can't take it. It's the woman she could really have, you know, patience for. She's the one who's harassing him. She's the one who's actually abandoning him from this. And then the third one, which is the discipline, <laughs> not the beating. I don't like the word beating, because beating, you know, beating, you know, not the word beating, discipline. The discipline here is like, it means that you are a woman, you have arrived to a stage that my admonishing, my way of treating the problem has been not enough. So I'm resorted to something that makes you even lower level. This. Wake up. So if that didn't work, then we come to another stage. It's going to be like uh, before this whole family collapses, we're going to go to a family, you know, uh, an arbitrator from this side, an arbitrator from this side, which is people, senior people from both sides that they agree upon to come because they're away from the problems, they're probably away from the war that you are engaged into. And they come in to solve the problem, and then if still they have arrived to a conclusion that it's better for them to separate, then it's better for them to separate. But there's stages before we reach that final conclusion. So we say to the sister, the best of the sisters is the one to understand that Prophet Sallam, he said, your husband is your gate, either to help her or to paralyze. You choose. So you are even having an easier task, just fulfill <coughs> and be able to your husband, that's your gate to follow If you're going to keep his life hell, then you're going to end up in hell. That's what it is. If you're going to make his life hell, you're going to end up in hell. Because he's your gate. فَمَنْ أَطَاعَتْ زَوْجَهَا She who had obeyed her husband, وَصَلَّتْ يَوْمَهَا And she had prayed, and وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا And she had fasted her month, then she will enter paradise from any gate that she wants. Yes, brother. Sheikh, uh, you know there's some brothers, they're like, they're practicing, they're married. They'll pray salah and they, you know, they do the ibadah. But their wife's quite harsh, she doesn't pray. And she doesn't really read the Quran and she doesn't pray the hajjud. I mean, what's your advice to those brothers? You have those type of wife who doesn't really know the deen and doesn't really seem to care. But why don't we say it the other way around? The brother is asking about the wife are not helping the husband who are making qiyam. They're making it very hard for them. Well, as well, some of the husbands make it very hard. I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing more to my side. The problem is the other way around. Is the women who are trying to make the qiyam, to make the qiyam, but her husband is not letting her. The complaint is always from the side of the men, not from the women. The men only complain about, oh, she's not giving me what I want on the bed. That's what they complain about. Okay? That's true. Um, but the women she always complain, oh, my husband is not good, in Naibad, he's not letting me do the prayer properly, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not. Always like this. Okay? He's not. Uh, that's, that's the all. But if, oh, I'll tell both sides to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the women, she needs to know that she cannot make a voluntary fast when her husband is, a, is present except with his permission. What about if he's not present? If he said to her not to fast voluntary, she has to listen to him. Even if he's outside the country. Or well, the hadith says if she's present. Yes, hadith says it's present, 
Because if he's present, she takes his permission, but if he does not give her permission whatsoever from the beginning, because maybe he sees that his wife, if she's been going to be affected by this voluntary father, her skin, she's going to go bony, he doesn't like bony women, she, he, she wants to feed her. So he wants to make sure that he feeds her. And every time he feeds her, it's a sada. And I told the brothers, brothers, don't complain about your wife eating too much. Because it's a sada for you. Wallah. <laughs> the more she eats, the more sada for you. The more sada. Amr ibn Umayr al-Dubri, radiyallahu anhu, one of the companions, he went to the market and he started uh, looking for a, you know, a garment to buy. So he was really bargaining with this seller. So Amr al-Khattab al-Allah and his reign of his khilafah, he's passing like, Ha Amr, Amr, ha, what are you doing? Amr ibn Umayr al-Dubri, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to bargain to get this garment, uh, garment for a woman and to keep it for the sake of Allah. After a while he came back, Ha, huh? he said, Alhamdulillah, I bought it. And I gave it for the sake of Allah. To whom you give it? To my wife. What? Mm. To your wife? What are you talking about? She said, well, the Prophet said, he said, if you give whatever you give your wife, it's a sadaqah. He said, you fear Allah. Watch what you said. Well, if you said what you said, let me, I'm not going to leave you alone. He said, I'm not going to leave you alone until we settle this issue. So he took his hand to Umm al Mu'minin Aisha. Oh, our mother Aisha, they're calling her. Behind a hijab, could. Oh, our mother Aisha, didn't the Prophet وسلم, say, whatever you give your wife is a sadaqa? She said, yes, yes. Our Khattab had defeated that, lost the argument, the Allah <laughs> So, whatever you give your wife is wife is a sadaqa. See, so he was bargaining to give a sadaqa. You think he's going to give it to a poor person? He's giving it to whom? To his wife. He's with wife, so he gives it to But don't put your wife, sadaqa wife. <laughs> you got to have trouble with it. That means the sadaqa is your intention. You give her, and it's a gift, darling. Huh? But inside yourself, you intend for sadaqa. And the wife is going to be in trouble for the rest of your no time. I can't have to go. I can't. Allah, I can't. Subhanakallah, bihamdik. Ashadu la